I'm going to show you the hidden EQ and reverb functions that are buried away inside Logic. It continually surprises me the number of features that are maybe not easily visible within Logic and are absolutely fantastic. So whereabouts are these hidden uh, EQs and reverbs? Well, first of all, you need to load up your amp designer. So if you're not a guitar player, you may not have looked at this section. If we go down here, we see the legends on the amplifier front but actually if you hover over here you see there's a little drop down and inside that drop down are a number of different EQ characteristics or character EQs that you can associate with the amp. Furthermore if you go over to the reverb you'll see that there are some reverbs here as well. If you use it with this amplifier it's going to have the tone of the Vox amplifier and the cabinet simulator which you may or may not want but I would recommend that you go down and select the clean preamp. So the clean preamp has no characters uh, representing any amplifiers, it's not matching any existing amplifiers. It also has no cabinet simulation so it's a pretty straightforward clean transparent sound. But again as you look here you'll see we have the EQ curve. So let's just try those out on this drum loop for a second and see how we get on. What can be really interesting is if you just leave the EQ settings as they are and then switch between the EQ models to see the difference in tones that each of them bring. So let's do that now. I think the modern sounds quite good, so I'm just going to have a little bit more of a tweak here. That's the hidden EQ setting, so let's over and go over and try the reverb. So switch that on. Now, a spring reverb is not applicable for a drum mix, but it might be applicable, again, if you've got a, a single DI'd guitar part or a vocal or a synth part that you might want to be experimental with. You've got all of these additional spring models, which you can't find anywhere else in Logic, and a couple of uh, just generic reverb sound. Let's just try the warm sound. Obviously the downside, this is 100% wet, so you've got no wet dry balance with this. But again, if you're using it as an effect that you are printing, then this could be a really useful or beneficial. Alternatively, you could run it this on a send and run your plugin into it. So let's just do that now. So I'm just gonna set this up um, to send to a bus. Let's call that. Um, Let's put that out. And all I'm going to do is simply copy this over to here. And what I'll do is here, I'll use this one for my EQ, so I'm going to turn the reverb off on this one. And on the second one, I'm going to set the EQ to the middle so it's basically off, and then use this as uh, my reverb send. And then I'm going to control the send level from here. So let's just try that. Additionally, you have here the ability to use um, a tremolo function or a vibrato function, which again can add some interesting results. Let's just go back to our first one. I'm going to turn this send off. I'm going to put the reverb on here. Again, perhaps using this on a drum kit is not ideal, so let's just switch over to this piano track I have here and see how we get on with that. We've 
certainly create an interesting electric piano sound there. Again, creating something like a Rhodes or a Wurlitzer using the tremolo function here and a bit of spring reverb. Sounded pretty good. kind of slightly difficult to find. You may never have used Amp Designer and it's a great tool for sound design and using and adding saturation to maybe your existing loops and beats or vocal parts. It's a really powerful plugin and often overlooked. These things may be not the most obvious thing to find here so I don't know why they didn't make it a bit more obvious but there you go.